Welcome back everyone, how are you doing today? Today I want to dive into the complex world of uh, color correction. In particular, the most interesting and important things you should be doing before doing color correction, whatever is uh, your content, either photos or videos, there is something very important to do, uh, first of all. It's a prerequisite, basically, before starting any color correction. I'm talking about color calibration of your monitor. So every monitor basically needs to be correctly calibrated. If you don't do this step, basically you end up wasting your time because whatever is the picture or the video you are trying to color correct, it won't be uh, as effective as it should be, as uh, uh, the colors that you'll be seeing on your monitor will be different than the standard, so different than what the other people will see. So having a monitor properly calibrated uh, will help you in order to get uh, the most accurate picture possible. There are basically three main ways where you can calibrate your monitor. The first one is a web-based solution. There are tons of websites that will help you through the process of calibration. The second solution is basically integrating your OS, uh, both, uh, for example, Windows 10 and uh, um, Apple have an integrated uh, color calibration system that will uh, uh, help you step by step in order to produce a proper calibration of your monitor. But unfortunately both uh, uh, solutions uh, are not really reliable as are still um, dependent on your eyes, so based on your decision. While uh, today I want to talk about uh, the proper way on how to do that, so the professional way of color calibration, obviously is more expensive, that, but it's really the one that gives uh, amazing results to you. So without further ado, follow me here. I want to present you this uh, piece of hardware. This is one of the most common professional calibrators around. It's called uh, x uh, i1 Display Pro. And this is not uh, what we can define as a cheap component. Uh, in fact, uh, you can find it around for uh, 250 bucks. I leave the link below in case you are interested into this product and uh, look at the specs. So anyway, if you don't have anybody that can lend you this, uh, maybe another solution for you apart from purchasing it is um, to look into any rental shops nearby your house. This is basically a device that is connected via a USB, as you can see here, to your computer and uh, there is a weight that will help you because uh, um, this basically needs to be put in front of your computer and uh, this goes in the back so it's uh, you can adapt it to any monitor length and any space you have the great thing about this device is that it's basically compatible with everything so um, this basically has in the front an advanced optical system so we can see it here so here we have an advanced optical system which is compatible with uh, projectors, uh, LED, plasma, OLED and basically any other display technology available. But uh, the funny thing is that it is uh, compatible with printers too. So you can calibrate also your printer and um, load and save your uh, um, printer profile in your OS. So being able to recognize always the correct color uh, as it should be meant to look like and um, it also has an ambient light, light sensor so if you like you can also decide to have the device calibrated to calibrate the colors based on the lightings of your ambient. I'm gonna use this device on my 32 inch 4k gaming monitor from LG that you can see here which in reality comes uh, already pre-calibrated from the factory. Nevertheless, using uh, the i1 Display Pro, I found that um, some small adjustments were anyway necessary. My monitor is uh, semi-professional as it covers 96% of the DCI-P3 color space, which is equivalent to about 125 of sRGB space. Uh, other more expensive and professional monitors like for example the new Pro uh, Display XDR from Apple can reach 99% of the DCI-P3 color space but they also cost 10 times more than this one and they are not intended to be used for gaming so I choose this one in order to handle both gaming and color grading in an excellent way in 4K 
uh, since uh, VRR slash G-Sync is compatible with this monitor. First thing to do before starting the actual calibration is to leave the monitor on for at least 30 minutes so that it's warmed up basically. Apart from that, after 30 or maybe 45 minutes you can start launching the app which is this one, iProfiler. And now we can start the actual calibration process. You can see here G-Sync is enabled and the resolution currently is 4K. And first thing we can see is that we have availability to choose among two modes. As we can see here, we have a basic and an advanced mode. I tried them both, but honestly I would suggest to go for the advanced mode as it's more precise and in a way it doesn't take longer than 15 minutes. So let's click on this one. Next thing you have to do is to reset your monitor settings to their default settings. So let's access to the monitor control and uh, reset everything. And we are ready to start with the calibration. So let's click here on display profiling. It will automatically recognize the LG HDR 4K monitor in this case. Let's leave here white LED. Next option is the white point. You can choose among the 50, 55, 65 and 75. Let's go for D65, which will be the noon light. Next thing to choose is the luminance. We can leave native or in my case, uh, 250. Most monitors will be 120. We leave the uh, tone response curve as standard and contra contrast ratio native. Now in my case, I won't be uh, using this uh, option here. So in case you want uh, the software to adapt the color profile based on your lighting conditions, you can enable this. In my case, I have a controlled environment in terms of lighting, so I will uh, simply leave it off. Once done, we can move on. Now ICC profile version, the most used is two. This is also the most compatible. You can also try version four. I tried that, I didn't see any particular change, but nevertheless, for being on the safe side, you can start with version two and move from there. Everything else will stay on default. Next option is how much is accurate, let's say this uh, calibration. So you can go for the default, which is uh, small, you have 118 uh, default patches. If you increase to medium, it goes to 211 until 461 for the large. Honestly, it didn't take much longer using large, so I will go for this. And this should be also the most accurate one. Once ready, let's move on. Okay, and the last uh, setting that you have here, you can allow the software to automatically adjust uh, all the controls. Or maybe you can do that on your own by accessing the uh, buttons on your monitor. Honestly, I prefer the second one to do it myself. And you can also save uh, these settings here. So you can save uh, all the settings that you are currently made. Once ready, we can start the measurement. Okay, next thing that is showing here is uh, to open the ambient uh, diffuser. So what we need to do is to rotate it uh, as shown in the picture. Now with the optics in place, we have an additional instruction. We can choose what are the settings that we can change on our monitor. Maybe not all monitors allow these uh, changes, especially the separate RGB controls. So you need to set this based on your monitor. My monitor allows everything, so all of them are selected. And now it's starting with all its tests. Okay, We have now some adjustments 
to perform. Basically, you now need to have access to your monitor controls. In this case, I need to adjust the blue as shown, as shown by the indicator. As soon as I access my monitor RGB control, we should see that line adjusting. Now adjusting the blue value, increasing the value. Now I decrease it too much. Now it seems to be aligned. Let me also quickly adjust the green and the red values too, just to get some additional precision. And now the red as well. As soon as you change one of these, the other two will slightly change. So you might need to go back and forth doing this operation. And here we can see the target and the current. So the closest it is, the better it is, obviously. We are now at the 6,518. So that's the closest uh, I can get for now. Let's move on. Now he's asking to adjust the brightness. Let's do that. So in this case, my brightness is already at 100%. Therefore, what I'll be doing is to change the gamma. I'm currently on gamma mode 2. This is mode 3, and this is mode 4, and mode 1. So what I'm doing now, after choosing the gamma, I will adjust the brightness. I decrease the brightness from 100% to 95%, and it's matching perfectly. I think we are good to go. We're moving on. And now basically what it's doing is processing all the patches that we saw in the initial configuration. So 461 in this case, since we choose the most extensive one. And we are at the final stage of the calibration. It took about 10-15 uh, minutes. Now the software is asking us to rotate uh, the ambient monitoring sensor so let's do that but obviously since uh, i didn't check the option for checking the ambient light i should be done and as we can see we are complete we can now save for having our measurement completed to have our measurement settings for next time for example And the last option, which is still unchecked, is the final one, so the ICC profile. We can give a name. It's always a good idea to give a name which contains the date, so you can remember last time you performed the calibration, since this is a procedure that should be repeated after a while. We also have a profile reminder, so in four weeks it will remind us that we should uh, Reperform the calibration. Once done, we can save the new ICC profile generated. And we can also compare it. Now that it's saved, we should go in the color management. Okay, and we can see that the profile we just created uh, has been uh, set as default. We can switch to other profiles by doing that adding. We can add anything else that we have in uh, installed in Windows. So any profile generated, you can right click and install it. It's very easy. We have also additional information here in the advanced device profile Let's choose this one and that's it I hope you found uh, this tutorial uh, quite um, interesting and uh, let me know if you get one of these um, 
and what are your results. I will leave anyway my uh, color settings uh, and the profiles uh, in the description below. Even if pay attention that even if you have the same exact mon model that I have, uh, there might be still differences. As, as I said, every monitor has a different uh, uh, calibration, is different itself, even if we are talking about exactly the same model. Nevertheless, I will leave everything below if you want to try. And please remember to subscribe and uh, like the video in case you haven't done it yet. That will really, really support me and uh, motivate me for doing this kind of videos. So thanks everyone. See you in the next one.